you're not pretty enough. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You have so much acne. Why do you stand like that? Why do you look like that? Your cellulite, your stretch marks, your body hair are all ugly. Your eyes, your lips, your nose, your ears, they're too big or they're too small. This is what I hear screaming back at me while scrolling through my phone, specifically social media. Stop the hate. Everyone is beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, so cute and hot. I wish I could look like you. The fat rights movement, NAAFA, hashtag F your beauty standards. These are sayings and organizations that I also see screaming back at me while scrolling through my phone. When it comes to social media, I get confused. Am I supposed to love myself or am I supposed to hate myself? Social media is a key reason why girls today have body image issues, but it's also a key reason why everyone's so aware of it. Social media is an ongoing cycle where it'll cause a huge issue one day, but the next day it'll spread awareness about it. To really put this into perspective, I did a survey with girls and boys in my school to see the difference in how much social media affects them. When asked, how long do you spend on social media a day? These were the results. As you can see, girls go on social media way more than boys do. This can lead to girls being more affected by social media. Some of my friends have personally told me how depressed they get when they scroll through social media. They also explained how many times they've changed their looks to the point where their hair is completely burned, their eating habits aren't healthy anymore, and they always freak out when they can't find their makeup bag. Girls my age should not have to be weighed down by this. Their focus should be on their education and they should be discovering who they want to be in the future. When I was in eighth grade, I made a website because this was seriously something people were talking about. When I made this website, I was listening to my friends who were struggling with their eating habits and their body image issues. I've been aware of the situation for a very long time and I can promise you that it has not gotten any better since I made the website. One of my friends from my old town has even attempted to take their own life because of social media. So this is when I realized that it was actually a way bigger issue than I imagined it could be. This beauty standard is mentally and physically exhausting for a lot of girls around the world. As a teenage girl, I understand how hard it can be. Social media takes up a big part of my life as a teenager. Everyone constantly posting and looking at things that celebrity has posted setting these unrealistic standards that are unbelievable. It's so hard to look at myself in the mirror sometimes after looking through my social media and seeing the beauty standards that celebrities are actually placing. This experience isn't fun, especially when you think you don't fit into the standard. Everyone was born with a different body type and a different facial feature than everyone else. So it's really upsetting when you look online and realize that you don't look exactly like how everyone wants you to look or you don't look like how that one celebrity looks that everyone thinks is gorgeous or stunning or beautiful. So it really just sets your mood down. It gets exhausting constantly trying to change yourself for the community around you. Now, this is honestly the really confusing part to me because I know how many defos social media has and then I look at these actions and I think wow, without social media, none of this would be happening. In 1973, there were only protests in the street for Roe v. Wade but now social media lets you fundraise, spread the word, and organize. Because of awareness spread on social media, Polish women left strollers outside of the train station for Ukrainian women who might need them. This is how social media can be used to band women together. 
Another way social media has really amplified voices was during the George Floyd shooting. Hashtag Black Lives Matter was trending everywhere, and with that simple hashtag, people really came together for protests and people were really speaking out about police brutality. Because of social media, people were able to come together and be one community. Police reforming laws were introduced at the state level, which was a huge breakthrough. Social media is excellent for raising awareness, and it amplifies our voices like never before. But it can be toxic sometimes, and here's how you deal with that. Taking a break from social media for a few weeks, or even a few days, can help your mental health and shift your focus on more important things like school, work, and healthy relationships with family, friends, and yourself. To take a break from social media, you can limit your time on certain apps by using screen time, only allowing yourself to be on social media for one to two hours a day. You can take a mental health check and talk to family and friends by talking about how you're feeling. And finally, you should surround yourself with people who will bring you up rather than bring you down. Only follow those who will make you feel really good about yourself rather than make you want to change who you are or what you do. Throughout this entire TED Talk, I have not been talking about only experiences that other girls have been going through and what my friends have been going through, but more about what I have gone through. These methods have really helped me become a better person in a way that I'm more positive about myself, more than I have ever been. I don't let social media affect me like how it used to affect me. Maybe I'm not pretty enough, or I stand weird, or my forehead, my nose, my lips, my ears, and my eyes are too big or too small, but I know my worth, and you should too.